There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. Holy Spirit, calm down and manifest your power. Oh Lord, calm down and manifest your power. Holy Spirit, calm down and manifest your power. See, the majority of people's life is not, often, oftentimes is not God training them to sow, it's God training them not to rob him. See, Adam was being trained to sow because sin had not entered into the world. But Cain is being trained not to rob God. That's very, very insightful. Look, look what I'm saying here. If you look at the approach that God took to a Adam who has no sin and the approach that he takes to Cain, it's two different approaches. God is not telling Adam, you should have sold, man. You should have did better. Why are you mad? He just ministering seed to him and keep on ministering seed to Adam. But when it comes to Cain, God saying, if you so correct, won't you? Because sin had entered. I want you to look at this real clearly. The majority of, of, of most people's life is not God training them how to sow and reap. It's how God is training them how to not rob him. When sin entered in, there was a different training system that was required. God never went to Adam and said, if you so correct, won't I give you a harvest? Never. He never told Adam sin lies at the door, but that's what he telling Cain. Here's the dangerous thing when God is training you not to rob him. You're wasting time. If you're taking notes, write that down. You're wasting time. We meet people all the time that are frustrated by the time that they wasted in the past. But when we see them, they complain to us in the present. But we don't see the time that they wasted in the past. We meet people like that all the time. 
we hear about their complaints today. But we don't study the time they waste yesterday. The, the cruelty of when God is training you not to rob him is that you're wasting time. You lose that time. And when you want something to happen the way that you want it to happen, now you got to endure the penalty of that time that you wasted. See, Cain was wasting time. When, when the Lord said, Cain, if you so correct, won't I bless you? If you honor me, won't I bless you? Why, why, why your countenance saddened? It's fallen. It's upset. It's disappointed. It's grieved. When God is training you not to rob him, you're wasting time. Number two, when God is training you not to rob him, somebody might be receiving your harvest while you're resisting God. Somebody might be living out your destiny. Oh no, prophet, what God has for me is for me. Moses, his destiny was given to Joshua. I'm sure you didn't read that correct, did you? His promised land was given to Joshua. He didn't go. Moses, 80 day faster, 80 day faster. 80 days fasted, not same time, but 80 days at least. Elijah, his destiny given to Elisha. Remember Elijah prayed to die. God gave his whole assignment, his whole harvest, his whole future to Elisha. That's what the double portion was. <sighs> Saints, do you understand that I've given some of you all a double portion and I'm still alive? Because you ain't wearing my destiny. In replacement fashion, you wearing my destiny in reward fashion. So you reward it with the prophet's reward. You see that? But you, you're not you're not living out. You, God not telling you go on live and up there. You know you, you got to teach from because he's not here no more. So you got to. I've given you, some of you a double portion so many times. Everybody that listened to my broadcast one time is highly anointed. <laughs> that's that's why I don't pity folk. I don't pity folk. And 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 like I said, when you're in your city, make decisions. Use a grown behind person, make decisions. We're not raising up no infants up in here. This is an apostolic ministry. Make decisions in your city. Ain't nobody gonna be babying you. Ain't nobody gonna be counseling you either. Hell to the whole gnaw. Everybody, if you listen to my broadcast one time, you highly anointed. It don't matter where you are. If you listen to me on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you listen to me on, if you listen to me one time, you're highly anointed. Therefore, operate in that high anointing and make decisions. God don't want to raise you up to be no baby. He want to raise you up to be a steward of his glory. But saints, when God is wrestling with you to become a sower, you're wasting time. And number two, somebody might be spending your harvest. Somebody might be receiving your harvest. We find that out in Matthew 25. The man didn't want to sow, but God gave the harvest and the seed over to the one that had five talents and multiplied with five more. God gave it over to him. When, he, when God is training you not to rob him, your harvest destiny might be going to someone else. Saints, that, oftentimes people, people get upset when the accounts get settled. How come this person got that, but I ain't got it? And truth be told, you might be discerning that the person took your harvest. <laughs> you heard what I said? Because when you are sower, you prophetic. 
You might be recognized. And see, you know, in this world, like people be like, you know, everybody got their own. You know, you know, you ain't got to be mad at nobody, you know. And that's true to a degree. But say somebody can take your harvest. Because I have taken many people's harvest, so I know. I know. I have taken many people's harvests. When you are the sower... You are the one that God is constantly picking to handle his business. Saints, the reason why God gave that one talent, Matthew 25, to the one with the five that had 10 now, because he had multiplied, was because this man, he was going to keep the Lord's money moving. He was going to keep God's kingdom assignment in operation. He wasn't going to stop and take no breaks. He was focused. What, what, what could we catch about the one that had the 10 talents? He started off with five, but now got 10. He is a person that does not get distracted. What number two, he is a person that refuses to go back to his former life. This is why he kept on sowing. He is also a person that has chosen to know God and protect his knowledge of God. Number three, right? He's a person that knows God. I hope that's number three. Uh, he's a person that knows, yeah, yeah. Number three, he's a person that knows God and refuses to jeopardize that knowledge. He's protecting it. Number one, he's focused. Number two, he refuses to go back to his former life. Number three, he is Knowing God and he's protecting the knowledge of knowing God. That's why he kept on sowing. Number four, he recognized generational familiar spirits that was after his life. He knew that he couldn't afford not to sow because this was his set time for favor. The Lord had now given him a, we a weapon and a way of escape. And he used the weapon and way of escape. He used the weapon and way of escape. He recognized this is the time in my life where the Lord has shown up with favor and I must celebrate him. I must keep myself connected to him and I must immerse my soul in sowing grace. Sowing deals with the soul. Because what are you sowing into? The word of God. And how does a man cleanse his way? Psalm 119 verse 9. By taking heed to the word of God. So when you're sowing, what are you sowing into? The word. So what is your harvest? The word. What is the hundredfold? The word. What is the thousandfold blessing? The word. What is riches and wealth? The word. What is wealth and riches being in your house? The word. What is with his stripes I am healed? The word. So when you're sowing, everything that's in the word is now in your bosom. So say, saints, why does men give into your bosom? Why would men give it to your bosom? Because it's the word. Why will you have investors on this earth? Money cometh is the word. How could you receive a hundredfold in the same year? Because it's the word. How could the Lord turn your captivity? Psalm 126, verse 4. Because it's the word. Psalm 126 verse 4 said that he turned to captivity. Psalm 126 verse 5 says, he that sow in tears will reap in joy. Psalm 126 verse 6 says that he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, rejoice with rejoicing, with his sheaves, bringing his sheaves with him. Because that's the word. Psalm 126, in verse 6, when it says that he that goeth forth, see, a lot of people not going forth. They're backwards. That's why they don't sow. When you're going forward, you become a sower. Until you start sowing, you're not going nowhere forward. 
He that going forward. See, you can't go forward until you sow. I just got word of knowledge. Some of y'all need to wear deodorant in this hot weather. You can't be smelling funky representing the Lord. You mess up money and favor if you smell funky. Pit the monkey arms underneath surveillance with some deodorant. Don't be walking around musky and dusty. Up in here, up in here. Hygiene is a millionaire anointing. Up in here, up in here. Funk is not the will of God in Christ Jesus. Up in here, up in here. Funk is not the will of God in Christ Jesus. Up in here, up in here. Get the ring tangler arms. Get the ring tangler arms and, and fix them up, baby. Fix them up. Don't be misrepresenting the Lord. Saints, everywhere I go, people be complimenting me. What set you got on? And I don't understand why women ask that. Women ask you that for several reasons. Number one, they want to sleep with you. And number two, <laughs> if, if it's not that. Whoever they sleeping with, they trying to buy it for them. Now, why would I want your bro hamster to smell like me? That's number one. Why would I want your bro hamster to smell like me? I don't want him to smell like me. And then people, people be having imagery while they duxing. So they with one person, but they thinking about you. That young man that was there today. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> with the with with the man that's here with yes young man young man excuse me <laughs> I'm 56 years <laughs> baby I turned 57 this fall excuse me it's a long story it's a long story it's a long story keep your hygiene clean Keep your hygiene clean. You got to get those monkey arms in <laughs> subjection. Don't be using this hot weather as a funk defense. <laughs> Don't be wearing no funk shields. Huh? <laughs> Make sure you get the monkey arms in subjection. Saints, smelling good helped me perform. Smelling good helped me produce. Smelling good helped my creativity. I think better because I smell good. Saints, when I want to unlock my creativity, sometimes I'll just get inside the water and I'll, I'll shower and I just, the water even will unlock creativity. That's why some people in depression don't take showers. Some people that struggle with stuff, they don't take a lot of showers. They don't really clean themselves. Cleanliness is an environment of God. So, so sometimes people in cleanliness, they don't even got to be super prayerful. But in that cleanliness is an environment of God. Don't be throwing your thong on the floor. <laughs> Pick that thong up off the floor. <laughs> Grandma draws included. Pick them up off the floor. Organize your environment so the wealth power of God could flow with creativity. Some of y'all good living single. Up there, some of y'all got two, three drawers on the floor right now. <laughs> One of them is purple. Pick them drawers up off the floor. One of them is purple. And there ain't no thought. That's the full drawers. I don't know if you got it from Walmart 
or Kmart or Target? Huh? Pick them up off the floor. Pick that bra up off the floor. Don't throw, that bra is going on your chesticles. Pick it up off the floor. See, saints, um, organization is a part of the wealth power of God as well because he don't want to bless disorder. See, when you got wealth on you, you there's a lot of stuff you're going to possess and you're going to know how to organize them. <laughs> you know, a thong is a half percentage draw. The man kept on, <laughs> the man kept on sewing. The man kept on sewing because he understood the generational familiar spirits that was after him as well. He kept on sewing because he knew God and was pregnant, protecting the knowledge of God. He kept on sewing because he was unwilling to entertain the spirit of unfaithfulness. I want you to hear me. A non-sower is unfaithful. Remember, if they're unfaithful with God, they're going to sure be unfaithful with you. A non-sower is unfaithful. Remember, if they can't remember to celebrate the Lord who is breathing oxygen into their body and causing their blood cells to work, the spirit of unfaithfulness is going to govern them towards you as well. Saints, if you want to get to know anybody and their level of work ethic consistency, you could simply ask them, do you sow seeds into God? How, how, how often do you do it? Where do you do it? When do you do it? Because sowing has a lot concerning how you deal with life. Whenever the spirit of God want to take you into the wealth power of God, even the spirit of God investigate your sowing. That's the main thing. The spirit of God not investigating who should get it. He just investigating what is your response to me? Because I'm the one that's going to be making you wealthy. I'm the one that's going to be making you rich. It's me. Saints, I know that you see people on earth, but you live in a face-to-face -face life with the Lord Jesus. See, saints, I know that there's people around me, but every day when I wake up, when I go to sleep, all throughout the day, it's me and the Holy Ghost. Saints, Juan could tell you, me and Juan, I could be joking around with Juan and then I just go into a prophecy. I just tell him, does and does. And I'll prophesy to his life. <laughs> Since I'm like that, that's how I operate. I'll laugh with you and then I'll hit you with, why you did this right here? You wasn't supposed to do that two months ago. That's how I operate. That's how... The prophetic anointing operate on me. I laugh. <laughs> but you eat this. Why do you eat this? See, you don't understand the divine bipolarism of God. It's divine. Because the Lord, he is good. That's his nature. So if you see him being good to you, that don't mean that you're good. That's just God operating as the person he is. See, when you experience love, that don't mean that you're lovable. Saints, throughout my life, I had over 97%, over 100% of people that I've loved was unlovable. 100%. I had to train them to be lovable. A hundred percent of people that I've loved was unlovable, male and female. Sometimes you can mistake love as if, oh, I'm lovable. I, I'm right. I'm good. 
And it's not that. The love is to draw you into the person you're supposed to be. It's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance, Romans chapter 2. So he uses goodness for you to discover your goodness. But saints, even goodness don't cause some people to discover their goodness. They only discover the depths of evil, despite goodness. Saints, throughout my life, I've anointed many people and I've studied, I've studied something. The people that sow into me are the people that I see progressing. The people that don't sow into me, their life went another path. I'm talking about even people that I met in 2014, 15, 16. I look at their life and they ain't went nowhere. They actually went below. They went downhill. You say, prophet, how you know? Because they all, they'll write you, they're crying. <laughs> Your life ain't went nowhere. You know why? Because they didn't recognize that the goodness of God showed up to them for them to discover their goodness. They remained evil. And there's penalties for that. Saints, if you choose to be an evil person after God mentors you, there's penalties. Now, you say, well, prophet, well, how come Puff Daddy? How come Puff Daddy is a, a millionaire, a billionaire? He made billions of dollars. Because Puff Daddy ain't being mentored by a prophet of God. I promise you that. Secular people deal with mediums. They deal with psychics. I promise you that. They don't deal with prophets of God. Because a prophet of God would torment them. Listen to me. It don't matter how somebody is interested in prophecy. If a sinful man get connected to a prophet of God, he will be grieved. You know why? Look at the rich man. That was P. Diddy Jr. What did a rich man do? He went over to Jesus, a prophet of God, and walked away sorrowful. He knew Jesus had prophecies that came to pass, but he walked away sorrowful. He knew that Jesus was a healer, but he walked away sorrowful. He knew that Jesus was a deliverer, a miracle worker, but he walked away sorrowful. Why he walked away sorrowful? Because an ungodly man get around a prophet of God, he'll be grieved. Because all that fascination and all that spectacle, at the end of the day, a prophet has one goal, to train you how to be wise, which is to fear God. That's the one objective of the prophet. Because once you become wise and fear God, you prosper. Because God will cause you to be successful because you respect him with your life. That's one goal. That's why many people, many people, many, the Bible said that the fool won't go to the wise. The fool will run from the wise. You know why? Because the wise got one objective. Fear God. That's the one objective. What did Solomon say in Ecclesiastes? The conclusion of all these things is that fear God. After after Solomon went on a rant in Ecclesiastes, his final words was the conclusion of all this stuff that I just went on a rant is fear God. Why? Because he's dominated by the mantle of wisdom. The majority of people's life, God is training you how to sow into. He's training you how not to rob him. When really he wanted to train you how to sow. Now, saints, I want you to catch you. You, you might be looking like, well, prophet, um, what do you mean by that? Ain't that the same thing? Being trained not to rob God and being trained to sow? Is it the same thing? No, it's not. Because if I'm training you not to rob me, I'm dealing with a nature that wasn't given to you by me. So I'm wrestling with that nature. Now, training you how to sow, this is God's nature. Because God so loved the world, he so loved. So he even sold the love that he gave 
Sowing and giving was in salvation's plan. So this is his nature. So when he's training you how to sow, he's just training you how to move in his nature. When he's training you not to rob him, the robbing him came from the thief. It was the thief that gave you that nature. So the thief's impartation, the spirit of the Lord is wrestling with that. When he wrestling with that, you wasting time, baby. Because remember, the thief not only gave you an impartation of his nature, but the thief is also working the penalties of you operating in his impartation. You say, prophet, explain it. Let's break that down. So when the thief imparts to you robbing God, the thief is also operating John 10.10 10 behind your back. The thief is stealing something that you're supposed to have. The thief is killing something you're supposed to be enjoying. And the thief is destroying something you're supposed to be obtaining. So the thief is not playing fair. You get a hoodwinked. That's why you'll spend your rest of your life winking in the hood. Some of y'all ain't tired of living on Elm Street. <laughs> You're not tired of living on Elm Street, Elm Street. Saints, I live around white people and it's way more peaceful. <laughs> I can't believe I said it. I believe I said it. I live around white people. It's way more peaceful. The only time you get any problems out of white folk is, is, is on Saturday night. When, when they drunk and they playing that techno music. And you know, you know they're going to have that pride flag. One day I walked out my house. I looked way down at the distance. I looked way down at the distance. I saw a brother. He was out there. I, I had my Bible in my hand. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Come on over. And I slid my way until I got to my door. <laughs> I, I, I danced my way to my door all the way. <laughs> hey, brother, where you going? <laughs> You're beautiful over there. <laughs> That's the only problem. I live around white folk. It's real peaceful. I ain't never hear no gunshot. Living around white folk is the best thing that can happen to you. You live around black folk, they up there have, and white people do it too. White people do it too. Don't, don't, don't mistake it. Don't mistake it. I'm, I'm just joking around. You live around black folk, they, you walk out there, oh, she thinks she all that. She thinks she got it made. Where she work? That's not even a good job. That's not even a good job. Oh my God. That ain't even a good job. Like she, she's so stuck up. Like the other day, I went go talk to her and she was like, hi. I expect her to say something else to me. I said about five words. She said only one. You live around white folk, the only defect they got is when, when they get real drunk, they turn that music. The music train. That music changed real crazy. Little white folks, that music be bopping. I'm on the edge of Calvary. I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge. That's the only thing, boy. But since you be singing, you be, I love you, Lord. But then you start, I'm on the edge of glory. You done changed the angels looking at you like, I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge. You wake up. I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge of glory. Ooh. I'm on the edge.
on the power of white folk, they love that techno music. And that techno music is shake your whole your it'll shake your whole foundation. That's all that thing. And since white people don't be buying no big old drip cars, you know what they buy? They, they buy them suburbans, they buy them little suburbans. They buy them little big old big old trucks and stuff like that. But mostly they be driving them box cars. They be teachers with khaki pants. Saints, white women be arguing with their husbands, though. They be arguing with their husbands and vice versa. They be arguing. But their arguments are different. Their arguments are different and, and their reactions are different. Because when, when, when white, people, white people are arguing, they go get a beer. <laughs> and they call their friends. Yeah, man, she's, she's, she's always like this. Oh! Mosquito just bit me out here. Come on, come on, man. Let's go back inside. And they just drink their beer. That's... And since when white people be nice to you, you know it's because they're on the henny. They're not really friendly. They got their own defects too. They be nice. Hey, how you doing? You're that, you're that guy, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> you're that money coming. You should, you should, you should come over sometime. Now, meanwhile, they know that they don't receive no black people inside their house. You should come over sometime and just, just have a couple drinks together. Yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> That's a criminalistic laugh. You never trust somebody that laugh like that. When <laughs> that is a jerk laugh. Now, saints, even the <laughs> even even the man, that man did not want the generational familiar spirits to dictate his life. He sold his way out of it. He had five talents. He went up to five more. And then God not only gave him that five more increase, now he got over $10 million. He's a multimillionaire because a talent is over a million. He's a multimillionaire. And God says, let me give you the one of the person that is not a sower. Now I made them to sow, but they don't value sowing. I empowered them to sow but they can find other things to engraft that money into. And he gave it to the one with the 10. What does that tell you? It tells you that number one, God settled accounts. There are periodical moments where the Holy Spirit roams, roams the earth strategically with one goal, to check everybody's sowing account. Can I move you to the next level or do I need to keep you here for a period of time or do I need to demote you and find somebody to replace you? Because you're going to fight me. You you just, that's not you. You don't want to do that. You won't play church. You won't play religiosity. Or is you somebody that I could look to you to keep my money moving? And saints, I want you to hear this. When God could trust you to keep his money moving, he not only going to give you seed to sow, he going to give you money to spend for the rest of your life. He, he not just going to give you seed to sow. He going to minister seed to sow, uh, minister seed for your soul, but he going to give you bread for food. That means this is money you can eat. Buy you a good meal. Buy you a nice outfit. Buy you some nice cologne, some nice perfume. Take care of yourself. Look good for yourself. You my daughter, you my man. Dress up real nice. Some of you are, you illegal. See, I'm never going to get to that point. My mind, my mind is really blessed. I don't got to dress up because I'm going to no ceremony. I dress up because I'm me. There'll never be another me. 
like me. I'm going to be the top in everything I do. You know why I'm going to be the top? Because I'm going to give my all. All that I could possibly give is going to be poured out in a moment. So I ain't got to worry. When, you, when you're not slacking and two-stepping, when you're giving your full effort, you know that you are irreplaceable. People get replaced because they lazy as hell and they don't want to give their all to moments. That's why people fail. That's why people fall. That's why people miss God. And that's why people get replaced by God because they don't want to give their all to a moment. If you give your all to the moment, you got to search within your belly and you got to let those rivers of living water flow out of you. You don't give your all to a moment. You know what you do? You become a replacement. God cannot keep anybody in any position if they compromise with giving God the totality of their energy. All demotion is connected to not giving God all of yourself in a moment. If you take a note, write that down. That's powerful. All demotion is connected to not giving God your all. If you get demoted as a wife, if you get demoted as a husband, if you get demoted as a child, if you get demoted as a preacher, if you get demoted as a servant, if you get demoted as a co-worker, as a, a manager, is because you didn't want to give your all. When somebody gives their all, like some of y'all at work right now, you better give all of your best to your boss. Don't be having your boss come up to you talk about um, you didn't finish this assignment. That bed not be named amongst you this day because the Holy Ghost is showing you why you lose in this life. Because you ain't giving your all. You want to give 10% here and 10% here with your broke self. That's why you're broke. Because you live in a scattered life. Oh, dear. oh, I'm over here today. Oh, I'm over here today. You can't deceive God. He not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that will he also reap. You so scattered, you're going to be reaping scattered too. You're going to be reaping scattered. Your harvest is going to be over here. You ain't going to be able to enjoy the harvest. What, what's the penalty of having a scattered harvest? How you going to collect it? Saints, watch this here. If leaves are blowing in a yard, how you going to catch the leaves? You gather the leaves all together, but if they're blowing, they get scattered. It's impossible for you to gather them because when you go gather this leaf, blow, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. That's scattered harvests. But that's, if you sow and scatter seed, that's what happened. People rarely invest all of their self to one place. That's why I often boast about certain people. I boast about them. You know why I boast about them? Because they have invested all of their self into Prophet Joshua Holmes. And I'm showing you what happens when you invest all of yourself into me. When you scattered, you can't be able to tell us where the harvest at. Where the harvest at? Where you at? Where is you? <laughs> the Holy Ghost ain't going to make you no multimillionaire. And you don't know how to stay steadfast to one garden. He not, he not, he not. Saints, I, I've been able to help Dr. Mike Murdoch do so many things. You know why? Because I'm loyal to him. I'm steadfast to any garden. I'm steadfast to his garden. I, I, I could study of something out of whack in his garden that I could bring beauty to, bring power to, bring honor to. You know why? And that's why the money keep on flowing. Money cometh is connected to loyalty to one garden. Money cometh is connected to loyalty to one garden. And I got my undivided attention there and I could serve there and I could sow there and I could bless there because I'm connected to what? One garden. When I'm connected to one garden, I could keep my eyes there and get results 
and get harvests from that one garden. Everybody that's connected to me, that's really connected to me, they get in miracles. They living in abundance. They are locking abundance. And you say, uh, uh, how you know that? Because you can't sow like that unless you got much. A sower, you, you, you can't be stupid. You, you got to recognize, how am I able to sow like this? Because I got an abundance anointing. How am I able to give like this? Because I got an abundance anointing. Everybody that's tapped into my soul, they receiving the glory realm of angels ministering to them in money. Because they tapped into me. They are getting results. And I'm proud of them. They are my boasts. They are my boasts. They are my evidential agents on this earth right now, showing forth the glory that's in this soul. You got to stay connected to one soul and you got to work that soul until you get the result of your inheritance. You got to work that soul. You got to work that soul. If you don't work your soul, it ain't going to work. You got to work your soul full time. Your soul always needs you. Even when we go past the seed of money, they need the seed of your time, the seed of your presence, the seed of your servant or the seed of you. They need you. You a seed. You. God study all these things before he make you rich and deal with your financial situation. Many people got financial strongholds sitting on their life because they got mental strongholds that keep on taking them away from their garden. Did you hear what I just said? I said many people got financial strongholds on their life because they got mental strongholds that keep on disconnecting them from their garden. This powerful. Many people got financial strongholds because the mental strongholds are taking them away from sowing their life to their soul. And so they're not a seed to their soul and they're not getting the harvests that they're supposed to be scheduled to receive. Saints, the man with the five talents that got five more was unwilling to lose his harvest. He was unwilling to lose the harvest. He was unwilling to lose the harvest. The man that kept on sowing, he was not going to compromise with his future. He knew he had all. Another thing that you want to catch about the man with the five talents is that he knew that he had wasted enough time already. He didn't have no time to waste. He could not let himself resist God in sowing. He was on a sowing time clock and he met the time. He was unwilling to miss out. He pit his seed in the ground by force and he did it faithfully. He didn't compromise for nothing. And the Holy Ghost brought him even higher in multi-millionaire status. He was already a multi-millionaire because five talents is over five million. So he was already a millionaire. He still wasn't sleeping on the sowing anointing. He was a multi-millionaire and he still was quick to sow. He was a multi-millionaire and there was people poor in Jerusalem. There was people poor in Samaria. There was people poor in Israel. And he kept on sowing. He kept on giving. He didn't sleep on his anointing because he knew what time it was. It was worshiping God time. I'm a true worshiper. I'm a true worshiper. I'm a true worshiper. I'm a true worshiper. Lord, I'm true. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Yeah. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free.